Well, hello there. Welcome back to another one of my videos. Right, let's have a look on the dash what we had in the garage today. 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> yeah, it's my new setup. I've got a few little goofy lights on. Soft lighting camera that I'm using. Other cameras that are sat in the background. So yeah, well, let's have some fun. Right, we're going to start off with the basics. So we're looking at the ways that heat uh, transmits through your engine and how we get rid of uh, the heat. So we're looking at the three things that we're going to be looking at to start with are going to be convection, conduction and radiation. Right, first of all, conduction, right? Different materials have different conductive properties. Some are good conductors, some are better insulators. Like wood is a really good insulator, aluminium is a really good conductor. This is our basic engine setup, more or less. The barrel's a little different because this is CASA uh, SS200 barrel. But we've got a BGM fan on it here. Now, we are, we are using air as a cooling medium. It's much better to use water because it's much more efficient, but our cooling medium is air, so we've got to have a fan that pushes the air over the cylinder to create cooling. Now that cooling is created by uh, air taking away heat from the surface of the aluminium through convection. So convection is when the air heat from the cylinder is passed from the from the, from the uh, surface area to the cooling medium and then the heat is carried away the other thing that comes off is radiation now we can't see heat through radiation because it's in the ultraviolet absolutely brilliant acf 50 what a product it protects your bike winter and summer on all your mechanical parts go out buy it it's the best on the market Okay, it's on to our whiteboard. We've got a little whiteboard here. We've done a few sketches on here just to show you what we mean by airflow and how it works. So, this is our centrifugal fan that we're using for cooling our cylinder head. You'll note that all the fins have got an attacking curve on them. So, that's the direction the fan spins and the attacking curve on all the fins is in that direction. That's because that's the most efficient style of fan for low RPM. If you want to move a lot of air at low RPM, you use this fan. And as an engine, a Lambretta engine, doesn't reach 20 or 30,000 RPM, this is the most efficient fan to use. So this kind of fan is what we're using. It sucks the air in at the middle, blows it out, pushes the air around and then over the cylinder. The cylinder head is the most important bit that we want to cool. That is where our heat's generated. So let's look at now part of my design that I've done to increase this using the coander effect to the greatest effect possible. My cylinder head cowlings have got a bell mouth on them, a venturi. The coander effect means that air will flow across the face and be stuck to it. So therefore it increases airspeed. This bell mouth increases the airspeed going into the fan. Therefore you can get more cubic feet per minute going over your engine. The other thing is the cone shape in the middle also uses the coander effect. That's why it's specifically shaped so the air sticks to that curve and then flows straight into the fins and it's pushed round and that way you get laminar airflow. So going from our laminar airflow design here 
we'll look at one that's been done extremely badly. They've used a dome cover. Now, due to Kalander effect, this dome will make the air flow across the dome and it will stick to it. So therefore, when it hits the back of the bottom here, it's going straight into the back of the fan and not being directed into the fins. So as it hits the back here, it creates turbulence, turbulent flow, bad flow. So you will create turbulence and you will slow down the amount of air going into your fan. The faster you go, the more turbulence you're gonna create and the less cooling you're gonna get. This is a bad design. So airflow is really important. And then we come to conduction. All aluminium conducts really efficiently. It's very efficient at conducting heat. So whatever heat's made in the top of the cylinder head will be transmitted down into the barrel, the piston, the con rod, the crank, the whole engine casing. And the, and the reason being, if you put two pieces of metal next to each other, they will always try to equal out. Due, due, according to the second law of uh, thermodynamics, the heat will always pass from the hottest metal to the coldest metal until they equalize. And once they've equalized, then it stops, uh, then the heat stops. Right, I've got two more flywheels here. Um, this is basically the standard flywheel. It's an Indian, Indian electronic. Now, if you look at the cover, even Mr. Innocenti knew about the Coanda effect and designed his inverted curve into his cover here to divert air into the flywheel. That's why mine are machined with the same curve in it to increase flow into the flywheel. That is the Kuanda effect. Well, in engine tuning, the main thing that's been overlooked over all the years has been cooling. Nobody seems to be bothered with it and they've just turned a blind eye to it. But the fact is that every time you tune an engine, you get more power. And when you get more power, you definitely create more heat. And nobody's fixed that problem. They've all just took the blanket over it and carried on marching. And I think that's pretty stupid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep covering cooling and keep working on it and keep improving it. And throughout these videos, I'm gonna show you different tips on how to get control of that heat and bring your engine temperature down. So um, I hope you're gonna enjoy this little series of videos about engine cooling. So can't wait for the next one.